Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to, what's the name of the show? Well, Tony P. Oddcast. That is him. I am me. He is I. I am Tony P. The aforementioned Oddcast one. That theme song is from Greg Klima. Killing it as always. Doing awesome things. Climate change is real. How's everyone doing today? I really, I feel like I don't have a lot to talk about. I was like, oh, it's time to make the podcast. Time to make the donuts. And I hit the button, and y'all, let me tell you, I triple checked the buttons. <laughs> it's like, it's only three buttons, and they're different colors. There's a yellow, a purple, and a pink, and it's it's the purple. It This is the order, purple, yellow, and then pink. But I don't know, I guess lately I was taking it for granted, man. I've been hitting the wrong button, so so that's what I did. I, I made sure I had the right buttons. Well, that's, that's, that's it, man. What else is going on? I went and I had an eye exam today. That was fun. All is good. Like a lot didn't change. So I got, got some new glasses, but I can still wear the old glasses. So I'm in that sweet spot of like, now I have options. Got a little black pair. Got the brown pair I'm wearing now. I got some contacts still left over. So I'm good. I am good on eyewear options. And that was it. That like that was that was most of, if not all of my day. But fortunately for you, <laughs> this show isn't what did I do today? Because uh, that'd be pretty boring. But we do have some fun stories. In fact, what do we what do we have? We have um, some pasta. We have a, a, a bus, a crazy what is a, a school bus joyride. And some angry goats. I mean, come on. How are you? You can't. Even if you were like, eh, I'm not really feeling this today. I'm going to tune out. Nope. Angry goats. That's how I get you. Now you got to stick around. But first, ever since she met thousands of her neighbors while running for local office a few years ago, Nina Jonkowint said she's been fielding complaints from fellow residents of Old Bridge, New Jersey. Apparently, Old Bridge is 30 miles northeast of Trenton. I wouldn't have asked. I didn't care, but I'm glad they put it in there. Uh, Typically, they call her hoping she can persuade the town to crack down on fireworks or ATVs or garbage left on the curb. This sounds like um, some neighborhood watch type stuff. True story. Uh, Over the weekend, I had uh, dinner with a bunch of coworkers, and this exact story came up. I was like, what? Are you guys listening to Tony P. Oddcast? Which would make no sense because we talked about it before I recorded it. But I was just so excited that the weird and wacky was the news we were talking about. But anyway, back to Nina Jonkowitz. Last week, a woman she had met during that unsuccessful campaign called her to report an entirely different problem. In fact, I feel like it is the most New Jersey problem ever. It seems like... Oh, uh, it's just it's just a thing. It's just what happens in Jersey. What was that problem, you ask? There is a pile of pasta dumped on the side of the stream. A scientist by training. This this story is dramatic. I feel like Jonkowitz wrote the story. No one else would be like, I'm a scientist by training. But anyway, she jumped into her car to investigate. Yeah, she wrote this. What she found about 30 feet off the road and less than a mile from her house confirmed that it was more than an overturned bowl of bucatini. Somebody had apparently dumped hundreds of pounds of spaghetti, macaroni, and alphabet shapes in large piles by the side of the stream. People often uh, dump construction materials, bed frames, and furniture, but never pasta. There was literally 25 feet of pasta that had been dumped. Well, I have so many questions. I don't like wasting food. That's actually one of the like weird thing. I guess it's not weird. It's a good thing, but one of those things that oddly bother me, like, oh, you know. And so, yeah, this is like a horrible, come on, what is going on? Uh, the scene resembled something out of Stregonona. There is a book I have not heard about in a long time. Classic children's book by Tommy DePaula about a kindly grandma witch whose magically overflowing pot floods her town with pasta. Man, that is a throwback. Jonka Winch, if you remember, was a scientist by training 
estimated that it was three to 500 pounds of pasta. That is a broad, broad estimate there, scientists. We can't like narrow that in. Uh, and she said it congealed in the woods. She documented the pasta with her camera phone and emailed it to a town official and they put it on Facebook. You know, Facebook to do about it. Anyway, before long, the town was consumed with theories who dumped the pasta, especially in a state known for its love of Italian food. Uh, uh, was it a caterer with a last minute cancellation? Was it a restaurant cooking for a football team that never showed up? These aren't my words, guys. I'm, yeah, it's the article. Uh, Jonkowicz says she eventually learned who dumped the pasta. And in fact, it wasn't even a restaurant. It was a private residence. But... She will not tell us more. She says she's in conversation with the family. They're trying to figure it out. Uh, apparently, the city came out and, like, cleaned up the pasta in, like, an hour. And just, like, you know, scooped it up with a shovel. But now I got to know. I feel bad for the, like, four of you listening to this. Left with a mystery. I, you know, I hate to be like, yo, there's all this pasta. I don't know. It just... We don't know how it got there. So instead, like I often do on the show, we can just speculate. Um, why would somebody throw out somewhere between three and six? Who has, th- let's, let's, let's go on the conservative. Who has 300 pounds of pasta just sitting around? I'm sure most of us have a half a box of some random pasta in our, in our cupboard. Even I might have some rotini or something sitting in there. But like... A half a pound? It was 300 pounds of pasta. And then why would you throw it away? Does pasta go bad? Like, I feel like it's dried pasta, unless they brought it cooked. Like, dried pasta lasts a while, right? Did it get bugs? Like, was there, I don't, ew, now I'm grossed out. But the world may never know if you you find out. If uh, the lady reaches out to you and is like, hey, here's what happened, let me know, because I'm out of the loop. I have no idea who dropped the pasta. Remember last year? Uh, last year. Oh, my God. Last week we had, it uh, feels like a year ago, a uh, dude, uh, a kid took a tank to prom, like the No Limit soldier that he was. Well, it looks like somebody uh, was trying to match him. As a teenage boy, they, they too must have been listening to the show and were like, oh, really? That gets me on the show? Well, now a teenage boy is facing numerous charges after allegedly stealing a bus from KIPP Nashville schools, driving recklessly through West Nashville and leading police on a pursuit. I appreciate, and I've probably said this before, that, you know, that that, he's not guilty. That's why he was allegedly stealing the bus. But I'll tell you now, the story is about him in a bus driving it recklessly, and he's not old enough to drive. I just highly, highly, highly doubt It was his bus. According to the Metro Nashville police, the 14-year-old took the school bus from KIPP College Prep on a Saturday. They followed the bus onto the interstate where it traveled at speeds between 60 and 65 miles per hour. (laughs) A whole five-mile difference there. I'm glad they cleared that up. Maybe it was a speed situation. You ever think of that? Officers of the Metro Nashville Police Department? Maybe Sandra Bullock was like, hey, I need you to not let this bus go any lower than 60 to 65 miles per hour. Officers deployed a spike strip. That seems that seems extreme and dangerous. Like there was no way. I mean, I guess if it, the they couldn't like block them. I feel like the kid wasn't going to like, like put a car side. He wasn't going to drive through the car, was he? Get the spike strip. Who cares if the tires explode and it rolls over into a fiery ash? Officers deployed a spike strip, but the teen driver allegedly, so much allegations, saw the spike strip, so he slowed down and attempted to turn around. Y'all, I'm not a police officer. I feel like I've seen enough movies or have enough common sense. You got to... You got to like hide the spike strip, right? You can't just put it where everyone can see it. They might as well just put a stop sign out. According to officials, the 14-year-old was captured, booked into juvenile court for vehicle theft 
aggravated assault, evading arrest, reckless driving, driving without her license, leaving the scene of a crash, and failure to report a crash. I'm just glad he was okay. Sounds like everyone else was okay. I mean, you, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't steal buses. But, I mean, it could be worse, right? I don't know. I got like, I got, like as a grown, somewhat responsible adult, and and hopefully, um, what's this guy? They probably didn't even give his name. He's he's probably in juvenile court. Probably not listening to podcasts. So I feel like I can safely say this. I don't know. It seems kind of cool. <laughs> like, like I'm not encouraging it, and nobody nobody ever should go steal a bus. But the fact that he did it, like, well, I mean, he shouldn't do that. But it's, you know, it's kind of cool the way he drove around this spike strip. I don't know. Maybe I'm bored. I need to get out the house. But I will not be getting out of the house in Florida because you never know what you're going to find. Two brawling goats. Oh, Florida. Gotta love it. Two brawling goats ended up at a Florida jail after deputies were called to break up their fight that spilled into nearby yards. The odd scene played out in Palatka. Where's that, you ask? Oh, 60 miles south of Jacksonville. That can't be too... So, Jacksonville... I feel like Jacksonville is like... I don't know. 60 miles south. I feel like Jacksonville is only an hour north of Orlando. So, like, it has to be close to... I don't know. The last time out of Florida store, I mentioned, like, oh, I've heard it all the time. I looked it up, but I forgot. Anyway, Palatka, 60 miles south of Jacksonville. Police were alerted to a fight in progress. Should I move to Jacksonville? Both goats. There were two goats. They were taken into custody. And the sheriff's office had a field day. The suspects were pretty mad. Oh, my God. One another. And the fight escalated into the yards of nearby residences. Both were pretty hard-headed, but officers managed to separate, wrangle, and bring them to the Putnam County Jail. The photo shows the suspects were still glaring angrily at each other as police led them away on leashes. I saw the picture. Uh, Dude was just standing there like, really? This is what we're doing now? I... So when, (laughs) when they say, um, we should take funding away from the police, right? I'm not going to get in a soapbox here, but what a lot of people mean is there's other areas. There's other, there's things that the police focus on. That's maybe not in their expertise. So if we take some of the funding away, we can put the money into other areas that can better focus on on other areas for example mental health also goat fights say what you want about you know defunding the police and your thoughts but i feel like i feel like again not a big supporter of the police i'll say it but i feel like these people have better things to do than goat fights really like i if i you know, trained, I don't know how long they trained, three days to become a cop, and then they put me out on a a goat fight? I'm quitting, man. That seems like animal control issue, right? There's a show about that on Fox. Send it to the animal control. But that's it. I think it was a short one this week. I don't know. Now I'm angry at the angry goats. Why were they fighting? That's what I want to know. What's there for goats to fight about? What is the issue? Can't we all just go to law? (laughs) That's it. I'm done. I'm ending it right there. Can't we all just go to long? I'm sorry, y'all. So sorry. (laughs) 